Good morning, I'm Tony Clark and I'm going to show you how labyrinths are made and we're going to put one or two here at the property. I'm in Warwickmobile, which is a long way away and uh, our friend Chairman Dan has said that we all have to wear face masks so I thought well, it's time to put my long-awaited plan of a couple of labyrinths on the property so I've got my own walking space. Firstly I will show you on paper how they're actually done. I feel the attempt I made yesterday to try and draw this to show you didn't quite work and I'm going to be assisted by the cat. This is brother in redoing it. So I'll just turn it off for a second. It's how the standard seven piece, uh, seven sided walk is done. Put down across. An L in each, it's a single L labyrinth. And you put a dot over here in each one. Then to get a left entry labyrinth, you start up here by joining this to here. Then this one to there, and the other dot around to there and then that one to there and on we go see the cat is still helping to the last one right around there. So that gives you your left entry and you'll see that as you go around the labyrinth you're going around a whole lot of turns forwards and backwards and north, south, east and west they call it a meditation labyrinth because you're walking all around. This one. Yes, you've come to assist me, haven't you? This brother. And we're going around here some more. This brother, can you <laughs> allow my viewers to see what I'm doing. Now what did we get up to? We're up to around there and we're going in here around a bit more until we finally reach the centre which is called the goal. That's the goal there. And then after you've completed your trip in you actually walk all the way back out again to make it up proper thing. So that's the seven sided um, left entry labyrinth. Now what I'm intending to do at the back is the double L. So we're going to have one, two, just like the 7L, not the first one, except we put a second set of L's in. You can go up to the 3L one, which is the big one I did down at Balan. So we put our dots in here. Just always remember the dots, they're very, very important. So now we're going to join up this way. On 
I'm doing it out in the garden, of course, I have a measuring stick to make sure that all the things are even. That is the left entry to our labyrinth and that's the one I'm going to be putting in the back garden shortly. And I'll put my painting clothes on and we go out and we do it. But as you can see this one, you're walking in here and you're going around for a long time. We take 15 minutes to walk around the full labyrinth outside. the outer circle now. You go all over the place. You don't really realise how complicated they come together as. And then from this outside circle we're going back to the inner circles. Top of the goal, it's not quite there yet. A few more to go. Now we've reached the centre, what the, they call the goal. And then so you'd walk in and then you'd sort of walk out again. You've got an exercise there about half an hour. So I'm going to have these at two feet spacings, two feet. My motor mile goes at 18 inches, which is one foot six inches, and it will leave a hedgerow around in the grass of about six inches wide, which will be the, the walls of the labyrinth. So it's helpful to do it when you've got long grass, you know, three or four inches, six inches. When I did it to blend, the grass was usually about a foot or more high and it would work. But this will provide a small labyrinth. The ones I did at bland were all seven feet spacing, so allowing for a three foot garden, a four foot path. Um, but these uh, will just allow for one foot six path and six inches. So from here to here is about 24 feet. That's about 24 feet out there. It's 26 feet I think to there and it's about 12 feet to here. So basically the front of the labyrinth is one third and the other two thirds hang off the back of the labyrinth. So when you're setting up you've got to measure up exactly where to put things which is what I've done with the stick in the garden. Um, and so uh, we'll go and see if we can video doing the actual making of the labyrinth. Now this is the backyard where the large one's going to go. You see this pole I've put here, I've put that in the centre 
of where things should go because normally two thirds of the labyrinth is out the back and one third is at the front and these are going to be spaced on lines of two feet apart and then I'm going to take my little lawnmower which is an 18 inch cut and uh, go through leaving a six inch wall so this one should spread out from here over that way about 24 feet and that way 24 feet and backwards about 26 feet and to the front at about 12 feet so that's where that one's going to go you see the grass is fairly long so when I do eventually cut it it uh, will have its wall mind you I spent a couple of days taking all the rubbish I can out of the garden in this van down to the tip we're at the front of the house now and this little lawn here just in front where the Peugeot is is where I intend to put the small 7L1 uh, if I can I haven't drawn that up yet so I might be able to come visit sometime so I expect to get underway doing all those uh, doing the labyrinths shortly thank you and today is the 31st of July 2020 it's a Friday if you can see that's where the uh, Here's the cross, which isn't where the gold is, gold is still up. Ah, and this is the garden we're going to use. And this, um, this labyrinth is uh, based on the old Norwegian labyrinths and things that they've found. Um, there is the famous Chartres labyrinth on the floor of the Chartres Catholic Cathedral in France which is a much more complicated one, it was apparently put there by the Knights Templar um, I don't know how long ago, 500,000 years, who knows but um, it can be walked sometimes when they clear it, it's under the main dome um, but uh, this is a much more simple labyrinth, anything that you, one that you could easily do at home I'm going to be painting it out you know, with a marking paint you know those cans of marking paint that the tradies use um, and but if you wanted one that's not permanent at all you could just do it in chalk on a concrete garden but mine of course need, we need the paint because it's uh, going to be in the grass so I'm going to go and get changed now so we can continue on of course no I wanted to mention the lads who went to Xavier College I put my Xavier tie on today um, those who came up through Burke Hall will be familiar with the labyrinth that is at Campion Hall just opposite and that's a Jesuit property that's there on the other side of uh, Hodgson Street I think it is um, and that one is built around the Chartres, Chartres uh, Cathedral labyrinth same sort and anyone can go and walk around that there in Studley Park Road Q. But as I say, mine's not as complicated as that one. Thank you. Now, oh, I've set things up to start things. No, I must explain. I'm now in my painting clothes, but of course, I'm formally attired. I have my tie on. This comes from the fact Xavier lads wore a tie for 11 years, or I did, from 1960 <laughs> to 60 to 1970 at Burke Hall and Xavier. But even more so than that, when we're doing up the house, it's eight. Oh, well, it was a house near Xavier, um, down in Kew. Um, we lived in with the ten brothers, Coolamert. Eight Stall Street, and I was busy doing painting there at one stage. And my brother Lowen came along and said, "Oh, you're not properly attired. And he put a tie on me." And 
then as a painter I always had to have a tie. Um, and uh, of course he then proceeded to paint the tie as well to ensure that it was a proper garb. <sighs> but it's the way we are sometimes. Always form until the day we die virtually. Uh, now, let me show you what I've done here. Now, you'll have noticed there are some sticks there. These are just garden stakes and I've put a mark on them, a red mark for every two feet. And these are going to be our guides for um, setting up the labyrinth at the correct size. There we are, as you can see. And there's part ray. I'm sure it's going to assist. Now I set this out as much as I can, being north, south, east, west on these sticks, and we're going to run some the cross out to six feet. So three of those markings. That's what I'm going to do. I've done three. Next thing is to put in the two L's, which I shall do and come back and show you in a minute. Here we make a square using our two feet measurements on the sticks so that um, we know that the corner of the L for this one will be about here. And they don't have to be absolutely precise, but it helps. Then we uh, take our stick aligning it with the pink line, not just where the that is. Um, and then we know we're going to run from there to there for the first part of the hill. side we're going to do here that there got that one lined up second part of the L across to there Now you see we've got a two foot walking path, a one foot six foot walking path there. We'll come back in a second. So we're now lined up fours and put the second bell in. Sit around there. And do that. Then we put the, <coughs> the magic dot in. And we go and proceed to do that to the other three sides. And then we'll come back to you. Yes, it's a glorious day here in Warwick Nabil. Um, the, the koala says it's about 64 degrees out here, probably it's working its way up, or 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, that's what a nice winter's day is like in Warwick Nabeel, in the Wimmera section of Victoria. You really don't have to move to Queensland, and you can buy properties here so cheaply. In fact, there was a report on the ABC a few months ago showing that people who own their own house and retire 
retirement age. Uh, no, people who don't own their own house from retirement age have assets of about $25,000. Those who do own their own house somehow, that they've managed to get, have assets of about $950,000. Makes a big difference as you are growing up whether or not you do get a house. And I would suggest buying houses in the countryside. I mean, I've had two lots of fortunes really taken from me in my lifetime and I've rebounded and now I own this property and this is a perfect place to retire. Lovely weather, lovely people, very few yobbos around in town because they're mainly farmers and um, just a nice place to be. Three working pubs, it's got everything to work to build. In this age of Covid, well, you're better off in a country town. We seem to be competing with a lawnmower somewhere. Anyway, this is all marked out now, the two feet things on the crosses and the dots. There's a dot there. And um, for your information, the koala says it's now 64 degrees Fahrenheit and about 18 Celsius. So that's a glorious winter's day in Warwick Nabil. So now our next job is to start doing the loops. Now this is where our first loop is going and so what we do here is we put the stick out here that it's two feet here. It's got the marking of two feet and it's basically in the middle of those and we take our can of paint and we roll around the top in a circle and that is the start of our system. In a second I will show you the next line up which is this bigger one going around here. And the way we do this we take three of our sticks and put them from the previous circle poking out so that we've got the two foot markings there in place and then we can run from the next circle round like this. On this next one I've put in the other two sticks that I've got. So I've now got marks at two feet more to go from here all the way around to the dot, which is over there somewhere. Let's do that one, shall we? set it up for the next lot. I pulled things out a little bit. Now we're going to do from the dot, the dot over there, all the way around to the other part of the cross.
I think we're making great progress on all of that. On this next one, we don't have enough sticks to go all the way around, so we do half the circle first, and we'll move the sticks so we've got the measurements for the next lot. So I've now completed that set of lines. Into there. We're about a third of the way through, I'd say. So I think it's time for a little cup of tea and we'll come back and finish it all off soon. Well here I am, I've got my tea, the Yorkshire tea, for which um, Prince Charles is the patron and of course how could we have it better than in Her Majesty's 40th year anniversary cup showing just how egocentric and eccentric your presenter is, wearing his tie and drinking his tea while making a labyrinth. I didn't show you the biodynamic books and homeopathic books later, probably not. Very eccentric is this person, I'm sure. <coughs> Being eccentric might send this video far further than all the other videos <laughs> that I have done. <laughs> Cheers to Betty. Yes, as I continue my cup of Her Majesty's tea. Prince Charlie's tea, actually. The koala says it's now 70 degrees Fahrenheit here, or about 22 degrees Celsius. Just perfect weather out here. Cheers. Of course, we used to joke about Betty. Betty Patitopoulos. Betty for Elizabeth, married Phil the Greek, and any Greek name will do. I'll never get my knighthood and all this stuff that's going on around here. Perhaps because one of my mother's ancestors was on the first fleet, Alan Wainwright. Perhaps we should just say we are Australian, yes. <laughs> of course, I was born in Melbourne. Back to the labyrinths now. Lined up for about half of the next one. Well, I've now done another couple of rings and halfway through the third one, so we're getting there. Show the activity. I'm now onto the second can of spray paint. Marking. Well, it's now about 4.15 in the afternoon here at Warwick Nabil. I've uh, got a lot of it done. Another three loops to go. Might get it done tonight. Might have to finish it tomorrow. Certainly for the moment. Tomorrow. Doing very well. Well, it's nearly five o'clock. I've got two more loops to do around. One more to finish that is over here that's coming along. I think tomorrow's the day for all of that, and uh, we'll finish it all off. So, I'll say good night for tonight, 
and see you in my painting class tomorrow. Well, it's Sunday, 2nd of August, continuing to put these lines down in the grass. Got about two more rounds to do. And I've got to go and move that pile of uh, wood over there because it's going to go right through the middle of that. Um, and uh, I'm dressed for the day. I've got my painting clothes on and my painting tie, of course. It's the Lowen's instructions years ago. And uh, I shall get moving. Yes, I've cleared the um, pile of wood. It's actually in the truck leaf for going to the tip. Now I'm starting my third can of marking paint. This should be the last one I need for this. There we are. Time for a little rest. It's Herman's Hermits. And an orange juice. There. Mango, pear, peach and mandarin. Uh, special from the Nudia Company, Queensland. Because um, yesterday we had the Queen's Cup. No, I've been, I'm a member of a life member of a um, monarchist league, but we'll have a musical theme today. Now, as you might be able to see, I've actually completed another one. Um, this one's coming up in orange, it's the new colour of the can, but that doesn't matter, you can have different colours. Now I've completed another circle. Uh, we're on to the last circle, and the last circle is actually in here behind this tree. There's not enough room to go in front, but that's what you do. You can alter plans slightly as you need to. After all, we've got this one running through the clothesline. Be able to be wary of that. These final sticks here, I've now completed the outline of the labyrinth. So the next thing is to take off my painting clothes and get the motor mower ready to go around in the middle and make the path. It goes from one end of the garden to the other as it was planned to do. Oh yeah, I'm back to being a little more formal now. I've got my Xavier tie on. Um, and I thought we'd just run through a couple of things. Uh, yes. So, that labyrinth I will be mowing shortly to have some grass as edges and um, the rest as a walking path. Um, and uh, that should be come out quite well. But I want to show you some of the other labyrinths that I've done in the past. Now this is an aerial photo that Google had up on that my brother sent me recently, Jerry, um, showing my dome house at Balan and the labyrinths that I built there. See this big one. These are all seven feet spacings. That'd be perfect for social distancing. That's a triple L one, so that's even bigger than the one we just put up. This is the 2L one, which is the same configuration as the one we've just put up, uh, which of course is shown here. Um, and uh, it was seven feet spacing, so it took a long time to walk around. Um, this up. Uh, New one, of course, only two feet spacings will be quicker and it fits in the backyard. That would never fit in the backyard. And then there's a 1L, and then there's some of these dot ones that I was talking about before. Um, which takes about five minutes to walk around. And that is the dome house that unfortunately I've just had to sell last year, the year before. 
to get rid of the dead cells left with when basically Adrian died and um, all the hemp industry stuff was never paid back to me that I put in so I just had to get rid of the mortgage probably the best thing I ever did get rid of the mortgage move up to Warwick the Beal where I own a house free and clear and uh, can continue on with life but that's happened a few times in my life that everything sort of disappeared except that I've managed to keep my records and all my tapes I've done of Melbourne bands and things and uh, books and now I'm going to commence trying to the mowing I shall continue on with all of that now and come back to you later. I'm halfway through the first cut, I'm having to do it on about medium height and then come back on number one. But I am making progress. The batteries on the mower over there decided that they um, are empty. So I putting them on charger for the moment. It's just a little electric mower. It's got an 18 inch cut, which is why it's quite good doing the small space that we're doing around here. Um, let me see if I can show you from the camera. Yeah, this is the entry eventually. We'll have it all down to about that size, a bit lower. Um, but I had to put up from one or two to about four. Well, we're waiting for that to charge up. We'll probably have some lunch or something. When I was building the dome, planning out my labyrinths and things there, we had one chap there, Uncle Bob, Gary Dorn's uncle, who did all the steel work. But he used to swear all the time. At one point they gave me this cross made out of two bended pieces of timber from where the timber was cut off in the circles for the dome floors and I said to the boys well it's a nice cross that could go for the holy the, the church of the holy labyrinth and we can get Bob in to give the sermons in the Australian vernacular of course you know the lexicon of the Australian vernacular is very limited isn't it won't, won't um, transmute or translate very deep philosophical and religious concepts. Not that there are any. Um, anyway, I mentioned this to Uncle Bob, and you know Uncle Bob stopped swearing, or reduced his swearing by half. You may have noticed that the peop main people who swear in society are those tradies and people like that, people normally with a year 10 education. By the time they've gone to year 12 and learnt a bit more English, they're able to express themselves much better in English. One of the advantages of me going to Xavier was that I can write all these refugee stories and all the complicated immigration stuff that I've been doing for the last 30 years, as I can actually listen to people and write down what needs to be written. I once came across some teachers on a train from Ballarat and I said, you know, I never got to finish uni. They said, it doesn't matter. You went to Xavier, you went to university anyway. Which is probably the way it is. Probably the same for a lot of those 
top public schools. Well, they're called private schools now, aren't they? Anyway, um, I shall come back shortly to continue on with our uh, mowing. Well, it's now five o'clock on Sunday, 2nd of August. I managed to get all the way around with the motor mower and halfway around with it returning before the batteries ran out again. But as you can see, the labyrinth is taking place, shape, and uh, the grass is making the walls and will gradually continue over time. In the meantime, we've got the redness to walk around, and it does work. around the rest of it. This is one of my cats, it's the Padre. No, no, that's brother. Brother's got the blue collar. See, looked after by two magical black cats. Padre, uh, brother, and the other one has a white collar, which is why it was called Padre. My brother Philip in Sweden suggested that. We'll get him on camera sometime soon. Now I've got to go to lunch with another brother, dinner, for Chairman Andrews shut us all down, as he's doing at the moment. There they are. It's Monday now. Monday morning. Monday afternoon, really. Just back to finish off the mowing on the labyrinth. And uh, the little batteries on the mower ran out last night. And then we'll show you some more. As you can see, things are looking quite good on the labyrinth. And there's Padre there, the guardian of the <laughs> black ones. And over there is Brother in the distance. Yeah. The labyrinth is now ready as much as it can be. Still got it take a branch or two off over there, but um, there we are. You will have noticed Chairman Dan announced a whole lot of new coronavirus, corona beer restrictions last night, um, particularly for people of Melbourne. Now you can make one of these labyrinths in your backyard without too much trouble in it. Have Plenty of walking time because it does take probably 10 minutes to walk around, and we'll have a bit of a walk around soon. And I was just reading this morning one of my emails that this corona stuff can be cured by drinking tonic water which has quinine in it, which made me remember, of course. The Queen Mother reached 101 or 102, and she had her da daily dose of gin and tonic. So I know that uh, I should be replacing my red wine with a daily tip of a nip of uh, gin and tonic. I will do so. If I start walking this each day for the next hundred days, I'll probably have people wanting me to make financial don no to to run a a thing like group captain Sir Tom Moore in England. Don't think so really. Um, besides which, 
they might have granted me the pension recently, but they're still taking $325 a week out for last year's taxes, the year before. So, um, I've got a long way to go yet to get on top of all those things. But at least I'm safe. I'm in Warwick Nabeel, wonderful part of the world, wonderful weather, and um, we only had one corona case in the high, high school last week. And the first one in months that we've had. Um, so, uh, uh, if I was to earn money by walking my labyrinth, which I intend to do anyway, um, it has to go to the tax man first. Of course, if I was to walk around like Sir Tom Moore, I don't think they'd give me a knighthood. Um, although, I do have the knighthood with the Knights of St. John. Hospitalum. I could wear my big red cape around on some of those walks. It'd be fun. But now, of course, it's cup of tea time, and so we have, you know, we had the Queen Mother, you know, the Queen's Cup the other day, and then the Herman Hermit's Cup and the milk today on it. And today we're just going to monkey around with the monkeys from the Mike and Mickey show. Mike did. Uh, which they did last year or the year before out here in Melbourne. I went to drink too much wine from the cup. Um, so, cheers. Nice cup of tea. A Yorkshire tea, of course. Prince Charles's tea. And we'll be back soon for the walk. Yeah, going with the monkeys theme. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. And we're just monkeying around our labyrinth as we go around until the sun comes down. So let's go for a nice walk. Well, good afternoon. It's Tuesday, August 5th, 6th, something. Um, now last night we had a Zoom meeting with the Priory of the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem, um, which is based in Melbourne. And I mentioned that I was building the labyrinth here and I might be able to go and do a group captain to John Moore type thing of walking the labyrinth. And I decided, well, perhaps I should wear my robes as a Knight of St. John, Knight Commander of St. John. That means I could actually set up a commandery, I think, from up here in uh, Woomera district, based around Warwick, the Beale and Horsham. Um, one of the big problems that the Knights have at the moment is they usually raise a lot of funds for uh, homeless people and other worthy charities down in Melbourne. But they can't even run a dinner anymore at the moment. Well, we've got normally our one coming up in August for the um, 454th or so anniversary of the Knights of um, Malta siege, the siege of Malta. Um, so we can't run that. I said, well, perhaps I'll just walk around and do what Sir John Moore did and get people to contribute some funds to them. They might even contribute some funds to me to help me with my bit of retirement. So I'll put um, some bank details on the front of the um, where you view this video, on the little notes just below it, and uh, you could make contributions. And the funds will all be well used because we're going to the situation at the moment where another quarter of a million people are losing their jobs. There's going to be enormous homelessness in Melbourne, and. The Knights of St John Hospitaller is a registered charity and it can accept funds. It's not a tax deductible registered charity, so you can't be tax deductible on it, but that doesn't matter really. So you will be able to make some contributions. So I'm going out now in my garb, my flowing robes, to walk the labyrinth and put that onto this video.
and fit and healthy and try to raise funds for worthy pools at the same time. Because eventually I'm going to put this letterbox around the front door on the front veranda for donations to be dropped in. Work out fine. Now that I've returned inside, I had wanted to say earlier that the Knights of St John Hospitality are looking for new members, new knights and dames, particularly dames, because we don't have that many women in the organisation at the moment, and we'd like to have more. So, if you'd like to become a member and about dressed up as a knight, um, you could do so uh, by contacting our um, Vice Prior Dino and I'll put his details on the message, um, the area where the film is uploaded to YouTube. Um, it is an old heraldic order, it goes right back to the Knights Templar and further back and uh, when they do hand out knighthoods they do it in a religious ceremony it's really Christians only that can join it um, and you start off as a serving brother then you, uh, well, you start as a friend of the order and then you can become a serving brother or a serving sister for a year and after that normally you'll go through to be elevated to being a knight does cost a bit of money each year, two hundred and fifty dollars or so in oblations, and it, um, uh, the initial setup costs to get everything probably a couple of thousand dollars, but it's well worth it. And yeah, you know, they are real knights through ordained through um, or knighted through uh, uh, um who is a uh, would have been the king of Serbia if um, they still had the royal family there. But he's prince at the moment, and uh, so it has proper heraldic traditions to it. Um, and it's the closest thing you can get to a knighthood, of course, in Australia, which it's totally habits not there anymore. Um, <laughs> and he wasn't handing out many of them, but they used to hand out knighthoods in Australia, British ones. There used to be three in Victoria. About a dozen, or seven or eight, or something federal, and two or three in each of the states. Even Papua New Guinea still, I think, hands them out. Um, New Zealand's doing it up until uh, the lady became prime minister over there. So there are lots of traditions there. Yeah. Well, they're starting to get some blossoms on that tree. Meaning spring is on its way. I do intend to put a small labyrinth here, a seven salt, in front of the house and next to the Peugeot. Peugeot might have to move a little bit, but probably not. I hope you've all enjoyed this making of the labyrinth, the 2L labyrinth, and the old Celtic style, the old. You find these in Norway and Sweden, places like that. Because my brother says that I'm really more a free Christian than a Christian, so that's low. Um, anyway, that's okay. Enjoy making these at home. You can do them very easily in your back garden.